When malevolent creatures invaded and annihilated the whole world's population, survivors were forced to cover their eyes in order to avoid death. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel, and we promise that we will provide you with all the latest movies available to help you save money. It may seem small to you, but it's a big help to us. Thank you. The opening scene of the film sees a man named Sebastian and his daughter, Anna, in a dimly lit basketball court. Sebastian presented a pair of skating shoes to Anna, and the two of them bonded under the sunlight peeking through the closed windows. They were alerted to someone else's presence when they heard a sound of clattering. Sebastian whispered to his daughter, and the two of them left the court. When they heard a low metallic whining coming from the darkness, they turned away in fear and ran away, only for Sebastian to get knocked down to the ground and beaten up by three blind individuals who stole all their supplies. Sebastian grabbed hold of a broken bottle but let go of it when he saw Anna shaking her head at him. When the attackers finally left, Sebastian and Anna put on blacked-out goggles and ventured outside. The next scenes showed the state the world was in. The world was left in shambles after it was plagued by the creatures, mysterious entities that, with just one glance, would manipulate people into committing suicide. After causing too many deaths in just a short span of time, there was not much to do but cover one's eyes and try to survive against the unseen enemies. These were exactly what Sebastian and Anna were doing as they walked through the devastated city with their eyes closed. They were walking hand in hand when they heard another sound of clattering from a distance. Sebastian advised Anna to only let her presence be known once he finally knew that the nearby survivors were good people. He called out, and the group of survivors stopped when they heard his voice. Sebastian sought their help as he and Anna didn't have any food left and couldn't find their way home anymore. The group of survivors whispered among each other, reluctant to help Sebastian, but then Sebastian told them that he knew where to find a generator because he used to work in construction as an engineer. One of the survivors asked if he was alone, and Sebastian replied yes. Then they heard the sound of ethereal whispers echoing, and they felt the wind picking up, indicating the arrival of the creatures. They hurriedly went back to their base, with Sebastian tagging along. For some weird reason, Sebastian was all alone, and Anna was nowhere to be seen. Martial, the man who was leading the group, noticed the bruises on Sebastian and brought him to Liliana, the doctor in the group. Sebastian told Liliana what happened and asked her to keep it a secret. At night, Sebastian was eating with the group when he noticed a man with scars all over the part where his eyes were supposed to be. The man wasn't ashamed of it, but instead wanted the other survivors to see his scars to help them realize that the creatures aren't the only evil beings bringing suffering to other people. The man's scars were caused by a group of evil humans who traveled the land with their eyes wide open, having accepted the creatures and now wanting the others to see them. Later that night, Sebastian lay awake inside the bus where the others slept. He sneaked out and stole all the keys he could see before going back to the bus. Liliana woke up to see Sebastian trying to turn on the engine of the bus. Once the bus was on, Sebastian drove it out of the base. The bus flipped, and Sebastian stepped out, letting the others see the beauty he found in the creatures. It turns out that he was one of the humans the eyeless man was talking about. The eyeless man was crying, and Sebastian apologized to him for not being able to see. One of the survivors, who is now manipulated by the creatures, set the bus on fire, causing an explosion. Sebastian watched in joy as he saw the late survivor's spirits ascending into the sky, then his eyes, which looked as if he were being controlled, turned back to normal. Anna appeared, holding Sebastian's hand and praising him for freeing the survivor's souls. Anna told Sebastian how beautiful it was in the world of the mysterious creatures, and Sebastian asked when he would be able to see it himself. Anna reassured his father that he would see it very soon once he was done leading the lost sheep. Nine months earlier, Sebastian was just a normal working father when Barcelona was invaded by the unseen creatures that manipulated millions of people into killing themselves. Sebastian retrieved Anna from the Catholic school and escaped through the chapel, where he met Esteban, the priest, who wanted to welcome the creatures as he believed they were angels who had come down to save them. Esteban stated that he wanted to see the angels and went out of the chapel. Sebastian covered Anna and met up with Laura, his wife, who died after getting hit by a car. Back in the present time, Sebastian went back to the church to confess his sins before looking up at the ceiling and smiling at the moving painting on the church ceiling. He and Anna continued walking around the city when they saw a bus with a drawing of an eye ahead of them. 
They heard glass cracking from the other side of the bus and went to see a few dead bodies and one man alive tied up on the bus. The man was hitting his head on the bus window, and Sebastian told him that the creatures were angels. When the man died, Sebastian saw his spirit ascending. Sebastian was on top of a building, observing the city through binoculars, until he saw a woman going into a pharmacy. He went to the pharmacy and attracted the woman's attention. He cautiously walked towards the woman, who introduced herself as Claire, when he got tackled down by a dog. The two dog owners, Rafa and Octavio, arrived, and Rafa was hostile towards Sebastian as he didn't trust him enough. Sebastian lied about getting robbed and beaten up, asking to come with the group and telling them that he knew where to find a generator, the same lie he told the previous survivors. The creatures have arrived, the wind is picking up, and the dogs are getting aggressive as they bark at the unseen entity. Claire, who was more empathetic compared to Rafa and Octavio, convinced the men to let Sebastian come with them back to their base. They arrived at the base, where Sebastian met a couple named Roberto and Isabel. He also saw a young German girl named Sophia, whom he mistook for Anna. Rafa interrogated Sebastian about who he is and where he came from. Sebastian told them that he was alone, and when Rafa asked about his stitches, he admitted that he was with a group of survivors who died after seeing the creatures and that he hid when the group of men arrived and forced the others to open their eyes to see. Rafa asked about the men, and Sebastian told them that they are a group of seers who walk the land of earth without blindfolds, forcing the other survivors to open their eyes and see the creatures. A few feet behind Rafa and Octavio stood Anna, who seemed as if she wasn't seen by the group. Anna told Sebastian to convince the group to go outside and find the generator together, as it would be suspicious if he went out with only one person and came back alone. Deciding not to listen to his daughter this time, Sebastian admitted to the group that there weren't any generators, and he only lied about it so the group would let him come with them. Rafa grabbed Sebastian so he could take him outside without a blindfold on. Wanting him to kill himself, and the others were telling him to stop and calm down, Sophia ran towards them, shouting at Rafa in German, which the others didn't understand. But Sebastian did, and he talked to Sophia in German, effectively stopping Rafa, who realized Sebastian was the only one who could talk to Sophia. They let him stay, and Sebastian translated everything that Sophia said as the young girl talked about what happened to her when the creatures first arrived. Sophia was on a cruise ship with her mother when they saw people running and jumping into the ocean. She and her mother managed to escape. Her mother covered her eyes, and when she could finally see again, she saw that they were inside a van whose windows were covered with papers. They turned on the radio, and that's when they heard about a broadcast talking about a safe place up the mountain called Montjuic. Sophia talked about a gondola that survivors could use to get to the castle, and the others started having second thoughts about whether or not to go there. Seeing Anna, Sebastian convinced the others to go to Montjuic, using this as an opportunity to get everyone outside. The next day, they began their journey to Montjuic. They stayed somewhere safe for the night, where Sebastian got to know Claire better. The next day, they were traveling again. Sebastian could hear the creatures singing, and he took off his blacked-out goggles. The dogs started barking, having felt the creatures, and the survivors began hearing voices of their loved ones, trying to manipulate them into taking their blindfolds off. The dogs escaped from Rafa and Octavio's grips and ran far away, but they could still hear their barks. Rafa heard his dog nearby and blindly reached out for it, while Sophia could hear the voice of her mother urging her to take off her blindfold. Fortunately, Octavio managed to stop her from taking off her blindfold in time. Rafa, on the other hand, could hear the whimpers of his dog, causing him to take off his blindfold. He looked behind him and saw the creature manipulating him into killing himself. The dogs came back and started nibbling on his dead body. One of the dogs saw the creature and was manipulated into biting Roberto's hand. Octavio found a safe place for them to hide, and he blew the whistle to get the other's attention. Everyone got in, and Octavio closed the door when he realized that Rafa was gone. Octavio shared his understanding of the creatures. He stated that the creatures don't have a permanent state, they are changing all the time and taking form based on their victims' fears, grief, pain, or beliefs. Sebastian sat beside Claire, who was shaken up after hearing the voice of her brother. Sebastian noticed Sophia couldn't be seen anywhere and looked for her. He saw her crying in a room and comforted her. He showed Sophia his necklace of a seraph, the most beautiful angel, so beautiful only God can look straight at them. He gave the necklace to Sophia, 
and the young girl saw Anna's name behind the necklace. Later that night, Claire approached Sebastian to ask about Anna, having seen the name behind the necklace. They heard Roberto moaning in pain and took a look at his bite wound. Seeing how serious the wound was, they decided to look for antibiotics in an abandoned house. Sebastian entered a room with an open window. When Octavio entered the room, Sebastian lied about the windows being closed and got Octavio to take his blindfolds off. Octavio killed himself, and when he didn't see Octavio's light, Sebastian seemed to have come to himself, and he looked at Octavio's body in shock. Claire heard him, and that's where she learned that Octavio was already dead. She heard the voice of her brother whispering in her ear and urged Sebastian to leave the place. Anna, who had been telling her father to take off Claire's blindfold, watched on as Sebastian followed Claire out of the house. Not listening to her, they went back to their hideout, where Claire tended to Roberto. Sebastian was sitting on the stairs, finally questioning what he'd been doing all this time. The next day, they were walking through a narrow street where Sebastian could see Sears hiding. One seer was riding a bike towards them. Roberto was hit, and Isabel crawled to reach him. Realizing that there was no escape anymore, Isabel and Roberto took their blindfolds off and kissed each other one last time. Once safe, Claire took Sebastian's goggles off and realized that he could see. While Claire was freaking out over her realizations, Sebastian was getting frustrated as Anna, who seemed to be fading in and out, was persuading him to save Claire and Sophia's souls. Seeing him distracted by an unseen Anna, Claire, and Sophia, they escaped from him. They went to the rooftop, where Claire grabbed a long antenna and used it to keep Sebastian away from them. Hearing the whispers of the creatures, Claire swung the antenna and fell on the scaffolding, losing consciousness. Sebastian knelt down in front of Sophia, fighting against himself as a bleeding Anna persuaded him to take Sophia's blindfold off. Anna was fading in and out as Sebastian was gradually coming to realizations and losing faith in her. Sebastian was about to take Sophia's blindfold off when the young German girl asked him who he was talking to. Seeing Sebastian hesitating, Anna screamed at his father, and when Sebastian pulled Sophia into a hug, Anna disappeared. Flashback to seven months earlier, Sebastian and Anna had been staying with Esteban, who often performed rituals by drawing an eye on his victims' foreheads and forcing them to open their eyes and see the creatures. Sebastian would always let Anna listen to music and comfort her every time that happened. One night, it was Anna's birthday, and the two of them were celebrating it. Esteban came with his men and took them to the rooftop, where he drew an eye on Anna's forehead and coaxed her into opening her eyes. Anna, manipulated by the creatures, jumped from the rooftop, and Sebastian wept as he witnessed his daughter's death. Sebastian, who had opened his eyes, saw the creature. That was when he started hallucinating about Anna, who led him into traveling and opening people's eyes. Back in the present time, Sebastian woke Claire up and offered to guide them to the tramway where the gondola was. Sebastian told Claire about Anna and everything he'd done. But now that he'd come to realize his wrongdoings, he decided to chase redemption by guiding Claire and Sophia to the gondola that would take them to Montjuic. Sebastian protected Claire and Sophia from the other seers and drove away from the seers and Esteban. When they reached the tramway, Sebastian set a cloth on fire, which then led inside the gas tank. The car exploded just in time when the seers arrived. Sebastian urged Claire and Sophia to go to the castle while he stayed behind to stop the seers from crossing. He said his last goodbye to them and confronted Esteban's group. When they reached the top, Claire took off her blindfold and tried to make the gondolas work. When it didn't, she hit the bell, and it rang, attracting the attention of everyone, including the creatures that went up the tramway, whispering into their ears. The gondolas started working, and Claire put the blindfolds back on as she blindly searched for Sophia, who was walking towards the edge, hearing her mother's voice. Claire managed to grab hold of Sophia before she could fall off the edge. Claire hugged her, and on the count of three, Claire jumped successfully into a moving gondola with Sophia in her arms. Sebastian managed to beat the seers, but during his fight against Esteban, he, too, got stabbed. Despite knowing that he was dying, Sebastian was still smiling as he gazed up at the moving gondolas. Knowing that he had saved Claire and Sophia, Anna laid on his father's chest and smiled as she reunited with his father, who had died. Claire and Sophia reached the Montjuic castle and were greeted by soldiers and survivors. There, Claire witnessed Sophia reunite with her mother. 
Then she was led into the laboratory, where she got tested by the researchers, who have been developing an antibody that can provide immunity against the creature's influence. In another laboratory that is hidden, the researchers conducted their 12th animal trial on healthy rats using a seer's blood. They put the cage containing the tested rats inside a confinement room and anxiously waited for the result. An ominous growl was heard from the room, and as it kept getting louder and louder, the restrained seer began yelling, begging to see the creature. 